Eleni Topoludi had planned a meeting with her new Facebook friend Alexander in November 2018. They'd met a week prior and were obviously getting along. When she initially met the man, though, something didn't feel quite right. As the night progressed, that apprehension gave way to complete horror. Now our story today has the majority of the key ingredients that will irritate you. We have hatred, unfathomable privilege, and two truly terrible people. The harshness of this case, in reality, enraged the Greek people, dragging new campaigns to pass stricter legislation. This is Eleni Topoludi's story. We're on our way to Europe's southernmost point. Hello and welcome to Greece's gorgeous country. When I mention Greece, what comes to mind? Perhaps it's the magnificent temples that tower over the cliffs of Athens. Perhaps it's their beautiful white seaside villas. Perhaps it's due to the country's excellent weather. Whatever the case may be, Greece is a well-known country. Greece is an extremely lovely nation. Almost every area of the island is stunning, from the dark sands of Santorini to the laid-back party beaches of Mykonos. I wish I could say that was always the case, but given the arc of the plot, I can't. Greek culture has deep roots in human history and has had a considerable impact on Western civilization. For a variety of reasons, Greece is a popular tourist destination. Because of its location in Southern Europe, it has some of the nicest beaches on the continent as well as a rich historical legacy. These are distributed over the country's various islands, 226 to be exact. Aline Topoludi, a 21-year-old university student, resides on Rhodes, one of the larger islands. Yanis and Kola Topoludi gave birth to her on January 15, 1997, in Didymoteiko, Greece. Eleni was lively and humorous. She lived her life to the fullest. Her parents showered her and her younger brother with love and care, and she was always one of the most visible individuals in the room. Eleni was also quite bright. She was a driven young woman who never left a job half finished, which helped her achieve some of the highest marks in school. On top of that, she was a verbal prodigy. By the age of 18, she was trilingual in Greek, English, and Arabic. She was terrified of leaving her family, but after graduating from high school, Eleni opted to attend Egon University on the beautiful island of Rhodes. Eleni rapidly acclimated to the island lifestyle, which centered mostly around cosmopolitan attitudes and cocktails as a student. It didn't take long for her to fall in love with the island's laid-back ambience and friendly locals. And she quickly decided that she wanted to make this her permanent home. Of course, she adored her family. However, she recognized that living at home would not offer her happiness. She felt compelled to leave her home, which many of us can identify to. She gained a lot of friends while studying on the island, and she was liked by everyone she met. Most people were drawn to her because of her endearing grin and silly demeanor. I also mean love when I say attract. Many of the island's male visitors were drawn to her dark brown hair and deep brown eyes. In November of 2018, Eleni was on Facebook when a 19-year-old Albanian male named Alexander Luca began texting her. In his texts, Alexander, who was now dwelling on the island, created a friendly and welcoming persona. On the surface, he was cordial to her, complimenting her beauty and being generally friendly and polite. In order to stay in shape, he frequently ran in local marathons. Eleni felt it lovely that many of these were to support good causes. As a result, the two started talking and discussing their common interests. Eleni also emphasized how much she loved to travel and how much she loved Rhode Island. You probably figured out where this is going. After a week of sporadic communication, the couple decided to go on a date. It was only for supper at a nearby kebab restaurant, which is widely regarded as a type of fast food in Greece. As a result, the two have agreed to meet on November 27, 2018. Alexander graciously accepted her offer to drive her to her flat. She didn't understand it at the time, but her meeting with Alexander would cost her far more than a nice supper. It was a typical Tuesday evening in November in Greece, with beautiful weather. Her rendezvous with Alexander was scheduled at 10 p.m., and the time was approaching swiftly. Alexander arrived on time in a pickup truck at her apartment. He parked nearby before entering the complex through the front door. He may be seen on surveillance film walking back and forth in front of her apartment building until their first date begins and she leaves. Alexander kissed her on the cheek and led her to his car. This truck wasn't anything special, but Alini was surprised that they weren't alone. Alini was perplexed since another man was waiting for them in the third seat. What kind of person goes on a first date with a friend? He presented himself as Minoli Kukura in any case. Alexander, I'm sure, saw this date as far more casual than Alini did. In any event, she accepted the new arrangement and the three of them went out to eat. So a little background. 
He'd also had a few run-ins with the law in the past. The majority of these cases included theft or violent violence, and they all appeared to be handled by throwing money at the problem. Manoli's father owned the truck Alini was presently in, and Manoli flaunted his riches and rank during the entire ride with both males. The man then informed Alini that his family had a nice summer villa in Lindos, not far from the restaurant. He then suggested that they grab their food and then head to the summer house instead of eating at a fast food establishment. The suggestion seemed a little out of character for a first meeting, but Manoli was a persuasive man and Alexander appeared to be up for it as well. Alini reluctantly consented to the new plan, but she couldn't remember what happened on her date with Alexander. It appeared to have fully gone off the rails. Alini texted one of her friends, asking her to call her in an hour after they finished their supper and arrived at the summer house. She was clearly displeased with the situation she was in. She needed to come up with an excuse to avoid being unfriendly. The best she could think of was to plot an escape for a buddy, figuring that if the men knew where she was, they wouldn't do anything sexual. Alini's friend contacted her cell phone an hour later and got voicemail instead of an answer. This was out of character. Perhaps her phone's battery expired, or she simply decided not to call. In retrospect, her friend didn't truly understand Alini's circumstance. She had, after all, kept her message succinct and to the point. Unfortunately, neither of these scenarios was correct, and the cause was far more insidious. Her radio silence lasted the entire night following her tragic date. She never returned to her residence. Let's fast forward to the following morning. The date was November 28, 2018. Two fishermen were driving along a cliffside on roadways. They were getting ready to go fishing for the day. However, when the two were looking for possible spots, they noticed something strange. When the two glanced over the cliff's edge, their fascination quickly turned to terror when they saw what lay below, a human body. The incident was reported to the police, who responded quickly. Thereafter, the fishermen told authorities that they were surprised that the body had not been washed away by the tide. The tide was rather rough this morning, and the water was incredibly shallow. If this body had floated away overnight, it was possible that it would never be found. Tragically, the body was that of a young woman who had been so terribly beaten that she could not be identified. The cops could only find a single rose tattoo on the ankle to use as a unique identifier. During the wait for forensic results, authorities began questioning everyone who worked at the area tattoo parlors. Alini Tapaludi's identity was unfortunately revealed as soon as their efforts bore fruit. She'd been thrown from the cliff the night before. Alini's family was informed of the catastrophe, and their shock and grief were understandable. The circumstances surrounding her involvement in this event were swiftly probed. The majority of Alini's injuries appeared to have occurred prior to her slide down the cliff. She was stabbed multiple times, struck numerous times across the heads, and finally strangled to death. Her legs were shackled together, and a sexual assault appeared to be the obvious goal. You can probably predict where this is going, but after checking CCTV footage from outside Alini's house, authorities were able to identify the attackers. When this was discovered, Manoli and Alexander were apprehended and taken into custody. It shouldn't come as a surprise, yet our spoiled affluent kid feigned to know nothing. But Alexander succumbed. He told the cops that he and Manoli were the ones who committed the crime. According to Alexander's story, the three of them got their kebabs from a local restaurant and then went to the Kukura summer home in Lindos, where they ate them while lounging on the roof and drinking vodka. However, their true motivations became clear not long after. The two men made sexual approaches toward Alini and asked if they could sleep together. Alini was taken aback by the suggestion. Even though she had been talking to one of them for a week, they were still utter strangers to her. She politely declined the offer, but when she did, things swiftly became deadly. They were both determined to succeed. Alini was threatened with a knife by one of the men, and she was grabbed roughly by the other. Despite being outnumbered, she fought back. Manoli and Alexander then escorted her downstairs to a disorderly room with two soiled mattresses. While she was her, Alini was beaten and battered on the head. Alini fought back fiercely when she regained consciousness despite her pain and anxiety and threatened to call the cops on her assailants. This was too much for Manoli to bear. He was a victim of crime and came from a prominent family, and exposing his genuine heinous nature would bring humiliation to them all. In his imagination, the intensity of aggression escalated. Alini could only be silenced if she lost her ability to speak or simply vanished. They first attempted to strangle Alini to death, but when that failed, they ruthlessly beat her until she was unconscious. 
Helene, on the other hand, was unwilling to give up the struggle and die. Then they drove to a remote cliffside and threw her into the murky sea below. Helene was still alive after plunging 10 meters into the shallow ocean despite everything she had gone through this evening. She was completely conscious the entire time, but because she was paralyzed and unable to move, she drowned in the shallow water. The two men returned to the villa for the summer after finishing Helene. Manoli and Alexander were exceedingly stupid for attempting to conceal their unlawful behavior. For starters, there was blood all over the place, indicating that none of them had ever cleaned before. Furthermore, they returned to the crime scene with all of her stuff and threw them off the cliff. Because of the slope, angle, and wind direction, the bushes caught most of these objects on the way down. They most likely planned for these items, as well as regrettably Alini's body, to be washed away to sea. However, neither of them had considered checking the tide, and the entire rock face was suddenly engulfed in water. Without a doubt, the strategy was ill-conceived. The next morning, two fishermen discovered her body. Even after the summer house had been walled off, checked, and cleaned, the horrible pictures of the previous night remained. Alini's blood was found on the stairs, in the kitchen, in the corridor, and in the bathroom. Our villains also had some unlucky incidents happen to them. Following their arrest, there was a lot of anti-foreigner attitude on local television networks, and as they villainized Alexander, many of them also depicted Manoli as an innocent participant. Of course, this was not the case, and as I'd previously stated, Manoli had already had several run-ins with the law, all of which had been settled peacefully due to his money and social standing. It was later uncovered that some of these charges were based on sexual assault, which is even more alarming. Once again, the Kukura family would pour money into the case, naively believing that it would result in a reduced sentence for Manoli. Alexander and Manoli spent the entire judicial procedure blaming each other for Alini's death. They'd all claimed they were merely innocent spectators during the assault, murder, and cover-up. If this was the case, why didn't they call the cops or disarm the perpetrator? Their implausible justifications were rejected by the authorities. Unfortunately, the media and the courts would now regularly side with Manoli or the police. Alexander is superior. This is due to xenophobia, which is a major problem in Greece. Foreigners are sometimes treated preferentially in Greek courts, and Manoli's defense team intends to exploit this by portraying Alexander as a corrupting alien who ruined the life of a bright young man from a distinguished family. This indicates that Alexander's criminal record has been revealed. Alexander faced several sexual assault charges identical to those leveled against Manoli. Unfortunately, sexism had a role in this case. According to the media, Alini was a free-spirited lady who asked for it because she slept around openly because she was not in a meaningful relationship. She was presented unfavorably, and it was implied that she was the one who sparked the trio's formation. One thing I didn't mention earlier was that Manoli's legal team attempted to discredit Alini, is that this was not Alini's first experience with sexual assault. She, too, was prey just two years ago. Despite seeking assistance from the police, Alini was advised to drop the case and keep it to herself since the offender had videotaped the assault and was using it as blackmail to keep her silent. Covering this case exposed me to the sad fact that many sexual assault charges in Greece never get to trial due to a widespread disregard for women's safety. Manoli's phony defense team also urged for an all-male jury, claiming that women could not be trusted to provide a fair decision. The Kukuras did everything they could to keep their kid out of trouble. They made public appearances, pushed their version of events, and even had a doctor prescribe antidepressants to Manoli in order for him to appear frail. Manoli and Alexander gave the camera crews the finger and smirked arrogantly throughout their trial, as if they knew they were doing something right. After two years of court proceedings and debate, both Alexander and Manoli were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of release for Alini's murder. A 15-year sentence for sexual assault was added to their minimum sentence of 25 years in jail. These penalties appear insufficient, given that both persons have a history of legal issues and that their crimes against Alini were extremely heinous. However, videos sent from behind prison show Alexander and Manoli being bullied by other inmates while serving their 25-year sentences. That data is yours to keep and use as you see fit. The public and Alini's family are still waiting for one of these people to apologize, but neither of them has shown regret for their actions. Alini's family decided to launch an anti-femicide campaign in her honor because femicide is still not recognized a crime in Greece. Memory. Because Alini's case was so stunning, I believe there is a greater need than ever to put an end to femicide. Unfortunately, there is no way to resurrect Alini. 
She will never learn that people have gathered to remember her or that her murder has been solved. She was a promising young woman with a great future who was snatched far too soon from us. A potential future was cut short by two males who clearly considered her as unimportant. On her birthday, her loved ones traveled to her cemetery to pay their respects and pray for her eternal peace, something they will eventually come to admire. Meanwhile, Manoli will be lucky if his parents can still care for him when he gets out of jail. While we're at it, isn't it a crime to be unable to read what's on your own t-shirt? This moron, it turns out, didn't get the memo. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments section and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Take care of yourself till I see you in the next video, and then I'll see you. Take care of yourself and avoid putting yourself in danger. Regards, and have a pleasant day.